and the monk who sold this Ferrari. Great titles, huh? Hey! So I got to officially start it now that I started the recording. Welcome to Triple M, Monday Morning Motivation. Uh, I'm excited, first Monday of March. March Madness is officially here, and we got an epic Triple M. Even Prez is ready. You see her ready for those nuggets right there? She's ready. So you know it's about to go down. So Robin Sharma is our guest speaker today. He's going to be sharing some nuggets. This is a guy that started as a lawyer, followed his passion into writing and speaking. And uh, he's really passionate about what he does. But what I love the most about him is you get to find how you learn the best. What I mean by that, not everybody learns the same way. Some people learn from people that are very high energy, rah, rah, like a Tony Robbins or Eric Thomas. Some people are those kind of learners, but everybody's not. Maybe you're a Jim Rohn, more calm, wisdom, slower, you know, more calm paced. This is Robin Sharma. So it's always great to hear different kinds of people because you may learn differently from, you know, different speakers, but also if you're a coach on the team and a distributor, you got to remember your people are going to learn differently, your clients and your distributors. So uh, without further ado, let's get into Robin Sharma's top 10 rules for success. Get your notebooks out. Let's get it. Hi, do you want to learn how to draw an amazing art? Would you like to learn how to? We are good in our comfort zones, but the moment we start to go blue ocean around our next level of mastery, our fears come up because we're going out into the unknown. It's human. Victims love making excuses. And if you recite your excuses long enough, you actually think they're going to be true. Only release Sistine Chapel ceiling level products to the world. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up? It's Evan. My one word is believe and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I want to see explode out onto the world. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from being a litigation lawyer up until age 25 to becoming a best-selling author, trainer, and motivational speaker. He's Robin Sharma and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume three. Enjoy. All right, let's kick things off with rule number one, my personal favorite, don't fit in. The traits that make you strange are the gifts that make you special. And so I know you're different because you wouldn't be here with me now if you didn't feel you were different. You probably don't fit in with most conversations. I sure don't fit in with most conversations. I don't know a lot about most things that most people talk about because I don't participate in the majority. Right? I don't participate in the news. I don't like to gossip. I, I like to encourage people versus diminish people. I like to be productive versus busy. I like to be creative versus complacent. I like to create value versus take from other people. I like to move into my present and future versus get stuck in the past. I like to be fast versus move too, too, too slow. I like to be a leader versus a victim. I like to believe in possibility versus get stuck in rational thinking because you know the instinct is so much more powerful than intellect. And all I'm suggesting to you is simply this. It's the very things that make you different that make you authentic. And if you don't fit in, I just want to share with you, I've never fit in. And the very nature of anyone who's living a visionary life, and you are living a visionary life, no matter what you're doing, let's not get trapped in labels. Oh, I'm just a coder. I'm just a receptionist in a, at, a, at, a, in a, at a restaurant or, or in an organization. I'm just uh, a yoga teacher. I'm just a gym manager. I'm just a chef in a restaurant. I'm just a teacher. People always say this when I interact with them on the social media. I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm just a student. No, you're not. I'm just a mom. I'm just a dad. No, you're not just. You're very special. There are no extra people on the planet today. And I just want to say to you and validate for you and encourage you, those things that other people might not get, those are your gifts. You might be awkward. Awesome. You see the world through a different lens. Steve Wozniak, who was on my stage at the Titan Summit Zurich, the co-founder of Apple, 
one of the best people I've ever met. He would not have been able to create the Apple platforms and products that he created if he didn't see the world through a different set of eyes. Steve Jobs saw the world through a different set of eyes. Travis Kalanick of Uber saw the world through a different set of eyes. Jeff Bezos of Amazon saw possibility. Let me have an online store that initially sells books. John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, Rosa Parks, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Beethoven, Michelangelo, who did the Sistine Chapel, and in Florence, David, Jonas Salk, Tesla. We could just go on and on and on and on. These people were misunderstood because the nature of a genius is to not fit in. Rule number two, hire A players. Bill Gates was asked what was the winning formula of Microsoft, when Microsoft was really the heavyweight champion of their industry. I think they're a little lost right now, um, but the larger point again is he replied with this. What made Microsoft, Microsoft was not our software. What made Microsoft, Microsoft was our hiring. I just want to suggest to you the second point or trait of a world-class company is their ability to hire A players. Here is the brain tattoo I want you to absolutely hardwire in to your business philosophy as a leader. You cannot build an A-level company with C-level talent. If your company is not winning in your field right now, you likely have weaknesses in your hiring. Don't just hire people because it's the easiest move to make. A lot of companies spend very little time on hiring and then most of their time managing their hiring mistakes. And you know, if you're building a business, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a manager, if you're a CEO, like a lot of the people who watch these mastery sessions and come to my live events, you know I'm speaking truth here. So you really want to nail your hiring. Rule number three, let go of your excuses. I've been evangelizing one particular message for two decades and it's you can lead without a title. You know, the seduction of society is that you have to have formal power to make a difference and that's just a lie the world has sold us. The reality is you can lead without a title and really the difference or the defining trait of a leader is you shift from victimhood. See, victims love making excuses and if you recite your excuses long enough, you actually think they're going to be true. I see it around the world, you know, people saying these things like I don't have time to run or I don't, I'm not good enough to be great at my work or this would never work or I don't live in the right country or life is hard and the more you recite those excuses you think they're true so let go of your excuses start getting some results done and over time you're gonna rise to your world class rule number four DC the lemon wedges one of the things about the 95% a lot of them are complaining they're making excuses they want epic lives but they're stuck in the group of super the cult of superficiality the top five percent the titans the icons the a players the world builders are very different they are not about superficiality they are all about granularity literally they have de-seeded the lemon wedges this is a metaphor that i teach basically i was at a at a hotel in Luzerne, Switzerland, and I love fresh lemon tea, and when they brought the tray to me, I noticed that in the tray was two lemon halves, or, and they, someone in the kitchen had taken the time to de-seed the lemon wedges. They actually de-seeded them. And when I study F1 teams, and I actually had the privilege to be right with the team at a recent F1, and what I realized is F1, almost like no other sport, is really about de-seeding the lemon wedges. It was the smallest granular detail, the smallest calibration that could make the difference between a top one and a 10th place finish. I really want you to think about that. I really want you to think about F1. F1 is won or lost in milliseconds because each lap 
if you get a little bit faster and you do it with the consistency, because consistency is the mother of mastery, that is the difference between first place and not even placing. And so if you look at the top 5%, they are all about deseeding the lemon wedges. If you look at the top 5%, they're all about calibration. And people might misunderstand you and say, are you obsessive? Why do the details matter? And all you have to do is smile and say, because the details matter. And if you study Beyonce, study the great athletes, you study the great F1 drivers and teams, they do deseed the lemon wedges. They do calibrate the Pomodoro. They get OAD, that brain tattoo, I've become really well known across the planet for, an obsessive attention to detail. OAD. That's what makes the best hotels, the best entrepreneurs, the best teams, the market leaders, the best restaurants, the best hotels, the best cars, the best products, the best user experiences online. They are sweating the tiniest, seemingly innocuous, innocuous details to create over time a user experience that creates a global base of fanatical followers. Rule number five, be comfortable in the unknown. How would you feel if you could try? Awesome, you guys. Uh, we're gonna kick, stop it there because they hit us with an ad, but also because there was a lot of negatives. I think I want to save the next ones for uh, another Triple M. So I want to give you guys some, and then uh, if you can, I'm gonna call on a few of you guys to share live. If you're at work, no problem. Put it in the chat bar right now. So if you put it in the chat bar right now, I won't call on you. So either way you get to share, so I love it. Uh, so let me give you a few ones that really stuck out to me. Uh, hire A players. So I really like this because if you're a distributor on the team in Herbalife, you know that we have business partners. Or maybe you work at a job, or maybe you, know, you operate inside of your family at home. Whatever it is that you do, you've really probably seen the impacts of the people that you work with or build with or grow with and how what they bring to the table and how you work together can impact the overall outcome. So one thing that we, you know, really been working on as far as our personal growth is really getting clear on what we bring to the table when we work with people and really getting clear on who we want to work with. Because you got to think about it, you guys, if you want to make a big difference in the world, if you want to make a big difference for your family, if you want to make a big difference for yourself, C players ain't going to make it. I remember in school, remember C, nobody wanted a C, or some people were happy with a C. For me, you know, I kind of BS my way through college, and then when it came time to make it happen, I would make it happen, you know, take what it is that that means. But I remember I wouldn't be that mad with A's or B's, but I also saw that the people that were getting A's and growing lived a different life as far as what schools they got into, what graduate schools they got into, what kind of scholarships they got. And I really started to pay attention to that. And then, you know, when I even paid attention to it more is when I came into Herbalife as a distributor, I started to see that A's, B's, and C's for us as Herbalife distributors were our checks, depending on how effective we are in the marketplace of helping people. I really started to pay attention to A, B's, and C's then. So you guys want to know that if you really want to grow, You've got to be A, clear on what you're bringing to the table as a business partner. So the way this doesn't work is if you're like, yo, I'm only working with A players and you're a C minus player. That's how it's not going to work because people are going to feel that. So how do you work on yourself? A, invest in yourself, be on Triple M, read books, go to seminars, seek a mentor. Working on your skill set so that you are an A player. How did you get an A in school? You studied, you worked hard, you sought out the teacher, you went to the student teacher hours. You did the work, same thing in Herbalife or same thing in any business endeavor that you're doing, or even if you're at a job. If you want them to see you as an A player inside of the organization that you work for so that you get a promotion, guess what? You're gonna have to raise yourself from a C or B to an A by investing in yourself. And then really getting clear on only the kinds of people that you are going to work with. They say good is the enemy of great. Why? Because you might start working with some good people that don't have that a player mentality and because you have a scarcity mindset like oh there's so many there's only so many people to work with as a distributor i gotta take whoever i say that because i've had that mindset when i started and i know what it feels like to just work with whoever because i when roxy and i started I was like we're gonna work with whoever right and i saw the impacts of that later on so i share with you guys from that the ill effects that has on your team your organization your growth and anything you do, because 
as you start to let anybody in the group, you guys, do you know how much oil it takes to make water go bad? You guys, if just a cup of oil gets into a, like a submarine's water storage, the whole water is contaminated. You know what they say about one bad apple? You ever left an apple in a bag too long and it just took one and the whole bag went rotten? That's what this means, you guys. And I tell you, I know, it's like, nah, man, we wanna work with everybody and we wanna love on everybody. We love everybody. That's one key. We don't work with everybody, right? This is why. Let me give you the background behind it. Number one, you want to grow. You want to make a difference. You want to succeed. You got to work with A players because only A's work in this world. You got to understand we're in a global economy where the competition is fierce. Number two, this is really why you got to get it. And if you really love on them, this is why you do it. If people bring their C, B minus B game, and it is accepted, guess what you just told them? C is all right. You're going to make it with C. And you know what? I don't, I don't want to fool people anymore. Because I fool people. And I was like, yeah, your C is fine. You know, you got this. I may say their C is fine, but the world is going to tell them that their C is not fine. It's going to show up in them not being successful and them being frustrated and them coming up short every single time. And then they're going to look at me and be like, well, I'm doing everything. And you told me C was fine. And now I'm in my head. I'm like, because I didn't want to hurt their feelings, I really hurt their journey. Because I didn't keep it real with them first time up. Like, your mom always tells you you're the most beautiful person in the world, right? You got a great personality. You're special. You're amazing. I know, you know, mom or dad or somebody in your life. And then guess what? You went to school and everybody's like, yo, sit your regular behind down. Your nose is big, your ears are big, and you kind of smell some days. Did you brush your teeth today? And you're like, wait a minute. Mom told me I was special. I'm the one. And then, <laughs> and then, you know, you get out there in the real world, and it's like, why isn't everybody being like mom or dad or that person to me? Well, I'm not getting it. Why? Because your mom or dad didn't want to hurt your feelings. And they told you that your C or your B was good enough. And I'm here to tell you, if they never told you, and it's not because they didn't love you, they just didn't want to hurt your feelings, that your C won't cut it. That your C's not going to cut it. I was a little overweight as a kid. I went to New York a couple summers, and my grandma kept a lot of sweets in the kitchen. I'm not blaming grandma, but I used to sneak up there every night, me and my cousin. His metabolism was faster than mine, so he could get away with all the, you know, the sweets and the cinnamon rolls. And I came back that summer... And my dad didn't tell me this till years later. He was like, yo, man, you came back from summer that, that summer from your grandma's fat. I was like, bro, why didn't you tell me? He was like, I didn't know how to tell you, man. You know how I had to find out? I had to find out in the PE room when I took my shirt off to change because I didn't make the basketball team. And my friend said, Aubrey, you have titties. This was young boy talk at that time. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're chunky. And mind you, he's even bigger than me. But I didn't get that at the time. And I'm like, damn, nobody told me. And I felt some type of way. And the reason why I tell you guys this is because I don't want you to get to in the PE room in your life where somebody tells you your C isn't going to cut anymore. When you didn't build the skills so you're laid on rent and they put an eviction notice on your door. When your mom has to go to the hospital and can't work for three months and then she gets an eviction notice on her door. When your family needs something and they look to you and say, you know what, can you be the financial rock for us? And you say, you know what, I can just give you a hug. When your little brother or sister or your daughter or your son says, I want to go to that school and you say, you know what, we got to look into JC's. When your, you know, kids, your, your, your teachers or your kids at school say, hey, we're having a parent-teacher night. Can you come in? You say, no, I can't because I got two jobs. And you have no idea what's going on at their school. I want to tell you this way before that happens so you can never say, nobody told me C-work C don't make it. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to cut it. And if you're having a tough time now, guess what's going to happen in the future? It's going to get harder. So you got to only work with A players. You got to be an A player. Because less than A leads to pain in life. So that's my biggest takeaway. I'm going to just give you guys that one. I know I went kind of long. 
but you can't be in this game called life not being or working on yourself. And you always got to be working as an A player. It does not pan out for you. All right, so let's get a few takeaways. I'm going to call on some people. Uh, let's get it. I saw it. Emma, what do you got? I, I see you doing cardio and, you, and you're listening. Give us a nugget. I'm trying to take you off mute. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I just finished my cardio, fasted cardio. So one of the things that I got this morning was leave the excuses aside. Leave the excuses aside when it comes to wanting more in life, going for your goals, going for whatever you want to achieve. That's one takeaway that I got from this morning. And the second takeaway that I got was just pretty much stay consistent. Whatever you do, just stay consistent because consistency shows not only for yourself, for your family, for your friends, and for everyone out there. Love it. Absolutely. Stepping up your game and consistency. A key tip, A players are consistent. That's a, that's a given. Uh, fired up. All right, next, let's get a lot of people. Y'all need to turn y'all videos on. I'm about to turn y'all videos on for you. Uh, let's get Nicole. What you got for us? Give us a nugget. I like the fact that, okay. I like the fact that he says, um, if you say your excuses enough, that you start to believe them. One of the excuses that I keep on saying is I don't have enough time. So I keep on catching myself. No, I do have time. I have 24 hours a day. I have the same amount of uh, time that Steve Jobs does, that, or well, he's dead, but uh, Beyonce and uh, all the people that are making you guys. Um, and I also like uh, obsession, um, the attention and to the, or have obsession to have attention to detail. I look at big couple and unstoppable couple and their detail to however they do, how they do everything and then how you guys as well with your boards and details to everything, how you guys do your business. So I'm now trying to take that into play for myself. Love it. Details are everything uh, because write this down in your guys' paper. The little things are the big things, you guys. Uh, I'm looking in the thread. What did I say? I said, we do declarations for our business every month. We do like celebration flyers. I don't think I've seen anybody else's celebration flyer. And we wonder why we did uh, 24,000 total volume in business last month. Why? The little things are the big things. Guess what? Last month we did our flyer at the beginning of the month. We cleared out our business board. And guess what? Brand new business board up with goals. You guys... There's people inside of Herbalife doing $50,000 in personal business a month. You think they wake up in the beginning of the month and say, we just gonna let it fly. Hope it works out. No. So the little things are the big things. What do you say to yourself when your mentor, your upline, or somebody that you look to for nuggets says do this? What do you say to yourself when they say that? That's the key thing to catch. This is what I'll tell you. If you say to yourself, I don't have to, it doesn't matter, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna be successful anyway, it doesn't help me, what I do doesn't make a difference, guess what, you just took yourself out of the game. Because guess what happens when you see that person at the gym that keeps looking at your button, guess what you tell yourself, same thing, it doesn't matter, it won't make a difference, it's not gonna be for me, I'm not gonna be successful, why? Because guess what the common denominator in all those circumstances are? You. You don't change you, it's the same person in all the things. So you gotta write this down in your paper. How you do anything is how you do everything. So when you're at an Herbalife training and, and somebody says, you know, take this note down or they, or they say they do this. I'm gonna tell you, we were at dinner the other night with a couple that qualified for Punta Cana. Guess what I'm doing when they're sharing some of the things they did. Okay, I gotta look up that, I gotta put that down. I gotta check that thing. And guess what they were doing? I'm not texting. I'm, I'm taking notes. I was like, okay, I can see why you're in Punta Cana. And then this is what other people do. Yeah, man, that was cool. That was cool. What's up, man? And they wonder why they're not doing nothing. Why? Because the same you that does this does that in your social media when you talk to people when you're out, when you're talking to your distributors and your clients, if you have them, you doesn't change. So this is what you can do if you want to change that. 
It's not some monumental max out bench presses where you find out who you are. Guess what when you find out and create who you are? In the smallest of details. When you get off this call, are you going to make a declaration flyer for March? It is March 5th. If you're not making a declaration for March by the 5th, you're honestly late. Remember, we're going to be real when you're playing like a C student. It's March 5th, you guys. This will be like in the Olympics when they blast the gun. You wait five seconds to try to beat Usain Bolt. And you're wondering why the celebration is already done for the top winners and you just hitting the finish line. You're like, I can't get it. This doesn't work. <laughs> and they're looking at you like, five seconds you waited on the starting block. What did you think was going to happen? And they're looking at you like, and you're looking at them confused. <laughs> you're like, yo, man, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm sharing this with you, remember, because I don't want you guys to think C student is going to make it for you. Just like my man said, just like my man said. Is there anything you want to add? That was fire. <laughs> I was like, that was fire. Uh, it's funny that he keeps on talking about the C stuff, you guys, because uh, last week, my little sister's 15, and your girl is ditching school. She had nine absences, talking about how she wants to be a doctor and all this BS. And I was like, Debbie, like, where are your grades? She's like, well, I'm passing. I'm like, what does it mean to be passing? She's like, I have Cs. I was like, honestly, dude, I was like, right now, you're, you're just average. I was like, you stand next to somebody that's actually busting their butt, going to school, doing the work. Like, if you were to be standing somebody, like, side to side, and you're about to get into the school, into a school, guess who they're going to pick? They're going to play the person that's playing at great. They're going to pick you. I was like, you're average, girl. I was like, you're not even above average. And, like, she was like, I'm going to show you. Watch. I was like, time will tell, honey. Time will tell. Let's go. But it's so true, you know, because – at the end of the day, like business, whatever it is, I know we have a lot of herbal lifers on here. Yeah, like if you haven't wrote down your goals, if you haven't done your board, if you haven't done your flyer, like you're late, you know? And it's just like the VIPs and everything that Herbalife like does, like puts out, why not qualify for everything? I mean, unless you wanna just be average and be a C student, like then by all means, but if your goals are really to grow, to like take your business to the next level, it starts with like, like Nicole said, attention to detail. Attention to every single thing is like key to growth. Absolutely. And if you're a client or if you're just a guest on Triple M, this could apply to you in any single way. What are your goals for the month? Still setting them out is going to set you apart. There's a reason why some people in Herbalife help one person. And there's why a reason why some people in Herbalife, Roxy and I helped 110 personally in our personal, organ, uh, personal volume last month. I don't say that to impress upon you. And Roxy's not saying to press upon you. What we're doing is we're showing you guys what's possible because this is a real difference. I'm going to leave you guys with this as we get off. There's no difference in the DNA of an average person and an extraordinary person. There's no difference in their DNA. They're both human beings. They usually both have two eyes and one mouth. And even if they don't, that's not an excuse because there's people like Helen Keller who couldn't even speak or see. It was extraordinary. So the real difference between somebody who's average and extraordinary is their decisions. And their decisions won't change if they think average is okay. This is really what we get to do for people. Because the reason why you guys, she used her sister going to school as, you know, schools choosing people. As Herbalife distributors, there's seven point something billion people out there. Guess what distributor they're going to choose to work with? The average one? Or the one that's not average. We have so many people hit us up saying, ah, oh, man, my coach isn't following up with me. I see what you do. I wish I could work with you. Of course, because of ethics, we don't. But guess what that does to that coach? They're probably not going to have a reordering client. And then after that year is done as their preferred membership, guess what? They're probably going to sign up with somebody else. So this is the difference between the average and the extraordinary is the decisions you make. And there's no difference. Get this clear. There's no difference. You weren't born average. You weren't destined to be average. Your decisions have made you average or not. And if you can understand that, you can realize that your decisions can change today, right now. And I was talking to somebody the other day in my family. They were like, I'm getting there. I was like, this isn't a driving from L.A. to San Diego kind of thing. It doesn't take a certain amount of hours to get there. 
You either are or you're not. It is a being kind of thing. I said, you're there. You are there. And they were like, you're right. I was like, it's not about me being right. It's about the truth of the matter. There was a time when you couldn't ride a bike and there was no amount of right, reading it on a book or seeing other people doing it that was going to make you be able to do it. There was a minute when you were on the bike and it was shaky, then it went to, I can ride a bike now. There was a jump. It's a quantum leap. It's a shift of being. It doesn't take time. It's not a distance kind of thing. It's just uh, you were this and now you're this, and it can happen whenever you decide to make it so. That's all it is. When you decide when somebody who's got the things you want says the things they did in that minute, you've heard the thing say, well, that won't work for you. Well, it doesn't matter. You say, I'm not that kind of person that listens to that voice anymore. I'm the kind of person that when somebody's successful who has what I want says what they do, I do it right now. That's a decision. That's not a time to get somewhere. That's a, I'm going to do it regardless of the voice that comes in. That's called taking control of your life. It's really that simple, y'all. Let's get it. Let's get it. Declaration flyers. We're going to see who doesn't today. And then we're going to see at the end of the month. You know what I'm going to do? I'm about to see who does their declaration flyers this month. And at the end of the month, I'm going to post who did them, and we're going to see where the volume's at. And I bet you we'll see a correlation. I bet you it's going to be crazy. And then they're going to be like, could it be that simple? <sighs> it's so simple. I didn't say it was easy, but it's very simple. All right, you guys. I'm going to unmute everybody. Hey, 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 let's get it. Have a good one.